Hello friends, I hope you have all been keeping yourself healthy and happy. If you're watching my videos for the first time, and if you're interested in self-help book summaries, please consider subscribing to this channel, otherwise it will also be fine. Just enjoy this video. I think you all will agree with me that humans are walking balloons of emotions. We are always feeling or going through some sort of emotions. Most of the time, we even don't know what to call our emotions. This lack of knowledge can lead us to lack of understanding of our own behaviors, actions, and other people's reactions. Understanding the emotions and the experiences that we are going through is like learning the language of our heart and our body. It brings us closer to each other and helps us live a better and healthier life. Bernie Brown, one of my most favorite authors, has recently published a one-of-its-kind book called The Atlas of Her. Based on her years of experiences, research, and studies, she has explained and defined 87 most commonly emotions and experiences that we all go through. In her book, she has divided all the 87 emotions and experiences in different categories. It is literally like the atlas of our heart. I strongly recommend you to definitely read this insightful book for better understanding. Meanwhile, in this video, I will be sharing only the definitions of all the 87 emotions and experiences from her book. Some of these emotions might be familiar to you, some of them might be new, and some of them you might have misunderstood before. This is going to be a long list of emotions. Please feel free to jump between categories through the timestamp provided below in the description. I hope you enjoy this video. Without further ado, let us begin. Category number one, places we go or the emotions that we feel when things are uncertain or too much for us. The first emotion is stress. We feel this emotion when the demands around us are beyond our ability. During this emotion, we feel unpredictability, uncontrollability, and overloaded. The next emotion is overwhelmed. It is extreme level of stress to the point where we are giving up and we are unable to function anymore. Anxiety, it is an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, and physical changes such as increased blood pressure. Worry, it is continuously having negative thoughts about the happenings of bad things in the future. Avoidance, when you feel anxious, the emotion of avoidance automatically kicks in as a strategy to cope with anxiety. It is the emotion of avoiding and is spending a lot more energy on going around the problem rather than fixing the problem that is already consuming us. Excitement, it is the feeling when we are pumped up with the energy of enthusiasm, which leads to the activity that we enjoy. Anxiety and excitement can be felt in the very same way, but how we interpret or label them can determine how we experience these emotions. Dread, this emotion happens as a response to the negative events in the future. The magnitude of this emotion increases as the negative events comes nearer to us. Remember, for anxiety and dread, the threat is always in the future. But for fear, it is a short-lasting, negative and high alert emotion in response to a threat in the present. Vulnerability. This emotion kicks in during the times of uncertainty, risk and emotional exposure. This emotion is not our weakness, it is the greatest source of our courage. Category number two, places we go or the emotions we feel when we compare ourselves. The first emotion in this category is comparison. In fact, it is not an emotion, but it is responsible for all the other big feelings that can affect our social life. Bernie Brown defines comparison as it is the crush of conformity from one side and the competition from the other. It is trying to simultaneously fit in and stand out. In simple words, comparison says, be like everyone else, but better. Admiration. You feel this emotion when someone's abilities, accomplishments, character, or something that they have created inspire us. The next emotion is reverence. It is admiration on a deeper level with respect and meaningful connection with something bigger than us. It is same as worship. Envy. Envy is used for things. It is the feeling of wanting something that others have. On the other hand, jealousy, it is used for relationships. 
This feeling comes in when we lose our relationship or a valued part of our relationship with someone. Resentment. It is the feeling of frustration and anger towards perceived unfairness or injustice. We also feel this emotion when we fail to ask what we need or expectations let us down. Because those expectations are based on the things that are out of our control, such as what other people are going to think, how they feel, and how they are going to react. The next one is Schadenfreude, Schadenfreude, Schaden whatever. It is the feeling of enjoyment and joy from someone else's suffering. And the last one for this category is Schadenfreude. It is exactly opposite of Schadenfreude. It is the feeling of joy and excitement from other people's success. Category number three, places we go when things don't go as planned. The first emotion is boredom. It is the desire of engaging with a satisfying activity but not being able to do so. Disappointment. It is the emotion when we feel when the reality turns out different than our expectations. The bigger the expectations, the bigger the disappointment. And what is expectation? It is an image in our mind how things are going to be and how they are going to look like. Regret. It is same as disappointment, which is unmet expectation. But the only difference with regret is that we believe the outcome is caused by our own decisions and actions. Discouragement. It is the feeling of losing confidence, enthusiasm, and motivation about any future event. Resignation. It is the state when we have already lost our confidence, enthusiasm, and motivation about any future event. Frustration. It is the emotion when we feel. Things that are out of our control stops us from achieving our desired outcome. Category number four: places we go when it is beyond us. The first two emotions in this category are awe and wonder. We experience these emotions in response to nature, art, music, spiritual experiences, or ideas. They are both similar, and often we use them interchangeably. Wonder is defined as an emotion that inspires the wish to understand. While feeling wonder, we tend to explore, be curious, and learn about the phenomena. Whereas awe is defined as an emotion that inspires the wish to let shine. While we are feeling awe, we simply tend to stand back and observe and provide a stage for the phenomena to shine. The next emotion is confusion. This emotion gives us clue that there is a need for further exploration. It is a good emotion. It motivates us and leads us to deep learning, and it also triggers problem solving. Curiosity. It is an acknowledgement of the gap in our understanding. It is also the feeling of the desire and the motivation to close that gap through learning and exploration. Interest. It is a cognitive openness to engaging with a topic or an experience. Surprise. It is an interruption when we come to an understanding which doesn't fit with our current understanding or expectations. Category number five: places we go when things aren't what they seem. Amusement. It is an emotion of pleasurable and relaxed excitement. Don't confuse amusement with happiness. Happiness is a general sense of pleasure, whereas amusement is derived from one's sense of humor. The next feeling is bitter sweetness. It is a mixed feeling of happiness and sadness. Nostalgia. It is the emotion of intense longing for the way our life used to be in our idealized and self-protective past. Cognitive dissonance. It is a state of tension between two contracting ideas, attitudes, beliefs, and opinions. For example, for those who smoke, they know that smoking could kill them, but they still smoke two packs a day. Paradox. It is the appearance of contradiction between two related components. These two components can be completely opposite to each other. But they still complement each other. For example, light and darkness—they are opposite to each other, but they complement each other. Irony and sarcasm; these are forms of communication in which the literal meaning of the words is different, often opposite from the intended message. In both irony and sarcasm, there may be an element of criticism and humor. However, sarcasm is a particular type of irony in which the underlying message is meant to ridicule or tease the person. Category number six, places we go when we are hurt. Anguish is an unbearable feeling of shock, grief, and powerlessness. Hopelessness, combination of negative feelings and negative thought patterns, such as inability to change our circumstances, causes hopelessness in our life. Despair, 
it is an extreme level of hopelessness. We feel despair when there is no any hope left for our life in present and the future. Sadness is a normal response to loss or defeat, or even when we witness the loss and defeat in other people's lives. Sadness, grief, and depression, there are three different emotions. Grief, it is the combination of the emotion of loss, longing for something, and feeling lost. Category number seven, places we go with others. Compassion, it is the daily practice of recognizing and accepting our shared humanity so that we can treat ourselves and others with love and kindness and we take action in the face of suffering. Pity. Pity is the near element of compassion. It has four elements involved in it. These four elements are a belief that suffering person is inferior, a passive and self-focused reaction that does not involve helping others, a desire to maintain emotional distance and avoidance of sharing other person's suffering. The next emotion is empathy. Empathy is the most powerful tool for compassion. It helps us understand what someone else is going through and help us reflect back that understanding. Sympathy, as pity is the near enemy of compassion, sympathy is the near enemy of empathy. Sympathy removes the feeling of sharing pain and struggles with others. It only says, I feel sorry for you without any real intention of, of helping that person. Sympathy can even trigger shame. Boundaries. It is a distance which explains when we can love ourselves and other people simultaneously. It is a prerequisite emotion for compassion and empathy. We can't connect with people unless we are clear where we end and others begin. Comparative suffering. It is the emotion of comparing one's suffering with other people's suffering. For example, I should not talk with my partner that I am fired from my job today because she has recently lost her mother. Category number eight, the places we go when we fall short. The first emotion is shame. It is an intense feeling of pain or experience of accepting that we are flawed. Therefore, we are not worthy of love and connection. Self-compassion. These emotions drive from three elements, self-kindness, common humanity, and mindfulness. Self-kindness is being warm and understanding toward ourselves when we fail or suffer. Common humanity is the thinking that we are not alone in this shit. And mindfulness is consciously accepting the feelings and the thoughts without suppressing or denying them. Shame is the mother of perfectionism. Perfectionism, it is not the internal tendency towards excellence. Rather, it is externally driven tendency towards perfectionism. It only answers the question of what other people would think about. Guilt, it is similar to shame. We feel this emotion when we fall short of our own expectations and standards. Humiliation, it is the painful experience of having ourselves degraded, ridiculed, or devalued. Embarrassment, it is a short-lasting feeling of self-conscious discomfort in response to a minor incident that was witnessed by others. Category number nine, places we go when we search for connection. The first emotion is belonging. Belonging, it is a feeling of being somewhere where you want to be and you're accepted there as part of that. As opposed to that, fitting in is the feeling of being somewhere where you want to be but your presence doesn't make any difference for the other people. Connection, it is the energy between two or a group of people when they feel seen, heard and valued without any judgment. Disconnection, it is a social rejection, exclusion and isolation from one person or a group of people to another person or a group of people. Insecurity, it is the feeling of having self-doubt or lack of confidence in oneself. Invisibility, it is when an individual or a group's humanity or relevance is unacknowledged, ignored or diminished in value. Loneliness, it is the absence of meaningful social interaction and intimate relationship, friendship, family gathering or even community or work connections. Category number 10, places we go when the hurt is off. The first emotion is love. We develop love when we allow our most vulnerable and most powerful selves to be deeply seen and known. And when we honor the spiritual connection that grows from that offering with respect, kindness, affect and affection. Lovelessness, as it is obvious, it is the absence of love. Heartbreak, it is painful feeling and experience of disappointment or failure that is linked with longing and love. Trust. It is choosing to risk making something that you value vulnerable to another person's actions. 
Self-trust. It is the trust on our own abilities, ideas, beliefs and opinions. Betrayal. It is the violation of the trust. Defensiveness. It is the intention to protect our ego and fragile self-esteem. Flooding. It is a sensation of being psychologically and physically overwhelmed during a conflict, making it virtually impossible to have a productive and problem-solving discussion. Hurt. It is the combination of sadness, being emotionally wounded, and the fear of being vulnerable to harm. Category number 11. Places we go when life is good. Joy. It is a short-lasting, sudden and high-intensity emotion through connection. It is an internal feeling. Happiness. It is a long-lasting emotion which normally comes as a result of effort. It is less intense as compared to joy, but it is more of an external or circumstantial emotion. Calm. It's a situation when we create perspectives and mindfulness while managing our emotional reactions. Contentment. It is the feeling of completeness, enoughness, and appreciation when we say all our needs are provided and we are satisfied. Gratitude. It's a reflection of our deep appreciation for what we value, what brings meaning to our life, and what makes us feel connected with ourselves and others. Foreboding joy. It is the feeling of always being afraid of another problem to drop and not being able to lean in good news, wonderful moments, and joy. Relief. It is the feeling when the tension and worries leave our body. We, are, we feel relaxed for that moment and we are able to breathe easily. Tranquility. This emotion is linked with the absence of demand and absence of pressure on doing anything. Category number 12. The places we go when we feel wrong. Anger. We feel this emotion when something comes in the way of our desired outcome or changes something from the way that it should be. Content. It is the feeling and thought when you think you are better than other people and others are lesser than you. Disgust. It is the feeling of a strong dislike towards something offensive. Dehumanization. It is a thinking process of demonizing others to make them look less human and less worthy of human treatment. Hate. It is the combination of all negative emotions such as repulsion, disgust, anger, fear, and contempt. Self-righteousness. It is the conviction that our beliefs and behaviors are the most correct. Category number 13. The places we go to self-assess. Pride. It is the feeling of pleasure or celebration related to our own accomplishments. Hubris. It is the excessive pride or self-confidence for the intention of dominance rather than actual accomplishment. Humility, it is the flexibility and openness to new learning with the right assessment of our own contributions, such as our strengths, weaknesses, imperfections, and new opportunities to grow. That marks the end of all 87 emotions from Bernie Brown's new book, The Atlas of Her. I hope you found this video as insightful as I found the book. Thank you so much for watching again until the end. See you in the next video. Much love and bye.